all right guys how are you all doing i'm fiesta here and today we have nvidia and cdpr is presenting or will be presenting rtx pod tracing in cyberpunk 2077 at gdc amy radeon rx 6300 entry level rdn 2 dexter gpu has been spotted already and the pricing is well less than 60 dollars intel arc a380 has been listed for now 120 dollars in newick which is the cheapest price that you can get an arc a380 nvidia geforce rtx 4070 will be launching in april soon enough and lastly amd is claiming that 8 core ryzen 7 7800x 3d is around 20 percent faster than the i9 3900k in 1080p gaming. So firstly we have Cyberpunk 2077 RT Overdrive update that will be coming with a support that is RTX path tracing. I wonder what that is but looking at the image right here, well it kind of tells you something that is going to be very much glossy, reflective and well we already know what ray tracing does but still we're yet to know what path tracing actually is and well we'll be seeing this in action soon enough because in the latest update they will be bringing in this technology and nvidia is obviously sponsoring the cyberpunk 2077 so obviously we'll be seeing the pod tracing for the first time in a game and i'm quite excited to see what kind of technology this is and looking at this image it kind of looks very beautiful of course i have to say but in movement i don't know how it will look like so i guess we have to wait and see next up we have hxl just replied to komachi and saka basically asking a question about this graphics card here well is it an arc or it's not arc it's amd radeon rx 6300 which is the entry level gpu that <laughs> amd is providing well seemingly enough that 6400 i thought 6400 xt was going to be the you know or 6400 is going to be the you know the entry level one but there was another SKU available and yes we are looking at the 6300 rx 6300 which supports ray tracing weirdly enough because it's a radeon rdn3 card so it should support or rdn2 card i should say uh, should support you know the ray tracing here but then again i don't think that can it can really run ray trace games that well and honestly this card is completely pointless <laughs> i mean unless of like official usage maybe maybe you can use that but for gaming i don't think it's even necessary to buy this but i guess it will be available in the market maybe it's going to be replacing the gt 1030 maybe we'll see about that next up we have a new egg update for the well, our Azeroth Challenger, our A386 gigs, uh, module or card here, basically the Arc A380. And as you can see, the pricing is, well, 120. It should have been the price from the beginning, right? Because it's an Arc A380, the lower end card, basically. Still quite good for this pricing now. $120 is not, is not bad. I mean, even $140 was appealing the previous pricing you know but now we have 120 dollars so even more appealing if you're going for you know entry level gaming i guess this is, this is a good option you know 120 dollars is not bad i the thing you should keep that in mind that 120 for the arc a380 that can deliver some good performance in the entry level i mean it's a good deal in my opinion so i hope this price will stay like this for ever Hopefully. Next up, we have a Twitter user Hongsheng2020 just posted this or tweeted this that Trip and One One update 4070 and the date as you can see 413, basically April 13th. That's the basically the 4070 launch date or alleged launch date. We don't know for sure, but I mean this could be the potential leak for the 4070 and the launch will be in April. Maybe I mean it's kind of obvious because 4070 Ti is already out, so. 4070 following up release in april kind of makes sense so we'll see about that and of course the pricing as you can see the there's a question 699 i mean maybe maybe not who knows i mean it should shouldn't be more than 699 i mean i do agree with that but we'll see about that and lastly we have a tom server article here basically uh, showcasing the AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X3D gaming benchmark, basically, directly coming from AMD here. And if we look into the benchmarks directly, well, in the gaming performance competitive, basically, we're looking at, it's a Rainbow Six Siege there benchmarking, along with Total War, Three Kingdoms, Red Dead Redemption 2, Horizon Zero Dawn. And well, if you look into the 
comparison with the Intel Core i9-3900K, well, 13% lead in Rainbow Six Siege, 18% in Total War, 3 Kingdoms, 23% in Red Dead Redemption 2, and of course Horizon Zero Dawn getting 24% lead here. So around 20% on average there's a lead there, so not bad. Very good performance right there. Even with comparing to the previous Gen 5800 X3D, we're looking at 21%, 22%, 23 and CSGO of course. And Dota 2 getting 30% in... And, of course, Warhammer, I didn't mention, 22%. So, looking pretty good, I have to say, even in the pretty, you know, defeating. I mean, look, 5800X3D 5, was on par with the i9-3900K in most games. And it's kind of obvious why it's going to be winning the same level. Because you can see it's around 20%. Even here, you can see this is around, like, 23%, uh, 24% on average, maybe. So... Yeah, like, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of performance we're looking at. And, well, we will be seeing more clear picture when we get, the, you know, on our hands. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. There's more gaming benchmarks here. As you can see that F1 2021, we're getting 21%. Watch Dogs Legion, 16% gain. Dota 2, 15%, of course, compared to i9, 3900K. And, of course, 30%, which we've already seen in the previous benchmark. Some application benchmark we're looking at, and that is photo editing is like plus 16, I plus six percent sorry i don't know what kind of software they're using here to just mention photo editing like i guess adobe photoshop maybe hopefully uh adobe premiere pro we're getting 12 percent lead here even in productivity is nailing it so pretty good the venture resolves i used that for my well editing basically and well 22 percent not bad i have to say not bad that's pretty good 3d graphics i mean <laughs> again not mentioning which uh you know, software they're using it. So then again, 33% here. I think this is combined, but maybe I could I could be wrong. But again, file compression here, 50% lead here. That's quite substantial. I mean, if you don't play games, file compression, I guess you're going to be, you know, you should buy it, I guess. But again, in gaming, it's pretty good. It's in uh, productivity, it's looking good. Hopefully, we'll be seeing the same trend across all other, basically all other applications and all the games. Hopefully, because again, this could be cherry picked, but then again, these performances are looking pretty good. All right, that is it for today. What do you think about the seven, so Ryzen 7 7800X3D? It's looking pretty damn good. And of course, the pricing, we already know it. It's going to be coming at 449 So, I mean, is it appealing? Is it too expensive? I mean, it's a similar price to the non X part, which is very strange. This time, they, what they did is basically pricing the same, you know, and just bringing in the X3D, which is far better than the non-X version, of course. I mean, I wouldn't say far better, but still better, you know? But yeah, like 449, I don't think that's bad pricing, but also delivering some good, you know, performance here. So again, this is the AMD's this uh, first benchmark we're looking at, and the third party will give you much clearer picture.